to see everyone here tonight. Welcome to this third Lenten season, third, third Lenten service. Let's go with our call to worship. We gather together today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We gather here as one, coming from places of joy and sorrow, of darkness and shadows, blessings and brokenness. We are called together by the Spirit drawn into the heart of Jesus, the one who reveals the glory of God the Father. Wander no more in solitude and despair. Reveal to us your presence, Lord Christ. Experience the presence of Christ this day. Open our ears and hearts to you, O Lord. Discover God's glory in word and bread. And help us not to be guided to your presence, dear Jesus. In our midst and in our gatherings of our heart as one, the glory of God is revealed. Come, let our eyes be opened and our lives transformed. Our opening hymn is We're Across the Crowded Ways of Life. Who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, 
and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were, were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Welcome to this third Wednesday of Lent. Unlike New Year's or Halloween or St. Valentine's Day, the Lenten season is basically observed by Christians. We start the season with Ash Wednesday and we go till Easter. This is approximately 40 days, which represents the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness. The key to Lent is to focus on repenting of sin and consecrating oneself to God. Lent should not be a time of boasting of one's sacrifice, or trying to earn God's favor, or increasing his love for ourselves. God's love could not be any greater for us than it already is. Our teachings these five weeks have to do with asking God to open our hearts to see more of him in our lives. Jesus met the woman at the well. The next week he met Nathaniel, and tonight, he will meet two disciples walking on a path to Emmaus. It's our desire that all might come to know him and see him in their daily lives. Let us pray. God, our refuge and strength, how often we feel as though our lives are littered with broken dreams and shattered hope. As the Spirit gathers us into your embrace of love this night, we long for hope and promise. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, may these words tonight open our eyes to the way you provide hope and promise in the seemingly ordinary things of bread and wine. Through our lessons tonight, may we see again the extraordinary life and light that comes to us through the never broken hope and promise of Jesus, present to us and for us. Amen. Most of you probably remember Helen Keller. I know it was a story in my reading book when I was quite young. She was a young lady that many books were written about who could neither see nor hear. She could, however, feel with her hands. One day, her teacher, Ann Sullivan, took her down the path to the well house. Someone was drawing water there. Ann let the water run over one of Helen's hands and in sign language spelled in the other hand, water. Suddenly something happened within Helen. 
something dramatic, something life changing. It was only a five letter word, but for Helen Keller, it was a gigantic breakthrough. She now had a name for a familiar experience, water. If this experience had a name, other familiar objects and sensations must have names as well. It was as if she had suddenly burst forth from a closed garden prison. Now she could be a whole person experiencing the world as a real human being in spite of her handicaps. Such breakthrough is always exciting. You can almost see the light bulb coming on, the understanding flooding over her body, the desire to know more, taking over her every thought at that moment, trying to make connections with what she already knows. In our gospel today, such a breakthrough came to two of the disciples of Jesus. There is more than one way to deal with grief, and their method of dealing with it was to leave the scene completely. We, like them, are masters of figuring out how to cope, to get by, and to push on through all that hurts and grieves us. There would have been rows of crosses on the hill that day. Executions were done when more than a few had been sentenced to death because it was a gruesome way to die. And it served as a visual reminder to all those who passed by to behave themselves, to keep the civil law, and to live in peace. The disciples were crushed, so they walked away rather than holding up in a private room in fear. They poured out their grief with each other as they slowly walked towards Emmaus, a town about seven miles from Jerusalem. Their hopes and dreams lay with this man that they had seen crucified. And to top off all the sadness, they were also discuss discussing the report that several of the women had been to the tomb in the morning and his body was not there. Instead of finding his body, they talked with an angel who told them that Jesus was not dead, but alive. What could all this mean? Confusion. Who could have stolen his body from the grave? What should they and the other disciples do now? I can almost feel their grief and their loneliness and their confusion. Them wanting to do something and yet not knowing what to do. As they walked and talked, a stranger joined them and walked alongside them and asked them what they were discussing. He could tell they were upset and was asking them to share with him. These two sad men were shocked to think that he knew nothing about the sad events that had happened in the last few days. One of the disciples started to share with, with this stranger all that had taken place, what had happened to this man that they loved as well as their present grief and confusion about what they had just heard that the women had shared. Then the stranger said, O oh, foolish men, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning from Moses and the prophets, he shared everything in the Old Testament scripture that was important to the ministry of the Messiah. Later, it looked as if a stranger might soon be going on a different road. So they asked him to join them for the night and share more of the wonderful teaching that they so enjoyed while walking on the road. He agreed, and that evening, when they were gathered around the table, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them. And it was like the experience that Helen Keller had as the water trickled over her one hand while Anne Sullivan spelled out water into her other hand. They all of a sudden knew who this stranger was. Luke tells us that it was this familiar communion liturgy that the men finally recognized Jesus for who he was. It was Jesus that had been talking to them. The story that the women had shared with them was true. He was alive. Jesus had just met them. Then they started to remember the feeling they had as they walked along, listening to all that he said about the Messiah and his ministry. It is in word and sacrament that we are guaranteed to meet Jesus, who promises to show up and be fully present with us. Sometimes we don't expect it, though we all should. In the Holy Word and the Holy Supper, Jesus meets us every time. 
If this is true, then we should be having a daily encounter with Christ during our scripture readings. Those who discipline themselves to make daily reading of the word a part of their lives will find themselves drawn closer to the Master. John Calvin was fond of comparing the, the scriptures to a pair of glasses, or he called them spectacles. He often said that even though we could know something about God from wonders of creation, such knowledge was fuzzy and incomplete without the aid of the Bible. Calvin insisted that just as people with failing vision needed glasses to read, even the most beautifully printed volumes, we who are fallen creatures must look through the scriptures to read the beauty of God. I think of the stories that I heard many years ago in high school and later on after high school about the POWs in Vietnam who kept it together by writing down all the scriptures that they had memorized as children and they read them daily. Scripture is power, and it's power that causes understanding peace, and it's life-changing. These soldiers knew their God had a plan for their lives, and he taught them to love. This peace, this truth, kept these men and brought them home to their families. The other place we find an encounter with the risen Christ is in the breaking of bread with his body. When Jesus took the bread, he blessed it and he broke it, and the disciples knew who he was. Hearts have been touched for over 2,000 years when they haven't, haven't taken the bread and the cup and heard those timeless words, this is my body which was broken for you. This is my blood that was shed for you. Part of the power of the sacrament is that we all experience it together. We are Christ's family. And we feel that in the most beautiful way when we gather around the communion table. Fellowship is at the heart of the body of Christ. We are not lone rangers, not lone ranger Christians. The communion table is forever our reminder of that. We come to the table wracked with fear, anxiety, physical pain, emotional trauma, and scattered dreams. But this gift of Christ's body and blood refreshes us for the discipleship journey, the journey that we are all on. Our faith is strengthened in the same manner that our physical strength is when we eat a hearty meal. The life of discipleship may be a long and a difficult one. Luther stated in his large catechism, for times like these, when our hearts feel sorely pressed, this comfort of the Lord's Supper is given to us to give us strength and refreshment. Jesus meets us every time we gather as people of God. How do our hearts burn within us as he opens the scriptures and he feeds us at his table? So today as we go along our Lenten journey, we long for an Aeneas kind of experience and we proclaim the word and we share together in Christian fellowship and in worship. We know the risen Christ is among us tonight. Amen. Our meditation hymn, For the Bread Which You Have Broken.
to see you in all the places you promised to show up. Places, places where we expect to find you, but often have our eyes closed. Places where you offer us new life. We, we want, want to, to see you, Lord. Be there in the scriptures at your feet as you teach us in the ordinary of our daily work. In the extraordinary of the bread and wine. Help us to see you as we journey in our grief, confusion, laughter, and joy. As we wander in search of what is real and true amid so many choices that do not lead to truth. Meet us in this place. In the community, in the, in the preaching, and in the meal. When did we see you, Lord? As, as you walked along, as you ate and drank. I was there with you all along. In expected places where I promised I'd be. Let us join our hearts in prayer, speaking to God through the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And now as you go here, back to the places where Christ leads you, those that are expected and unexpected, remember, you are loved, forgiven, and restored to a new relationship with the one who sees you fully and completely, just as you are. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our sending him is in the cross of Christ, I glory. Mm.